Hi guys, welcome. Welcome, everybody, if you can come in, take a seat. A lot of familiar faces here, some new faces. I'm so happy and honored uh, to be here with you and uh, with Dr. Evelyn Boudoir-Roy. So we are very, very happy to have you here at our Type 1 workshop. So let's start by uh, giving some thank yous and giving some gratitude. Um, this day wouldn't be possible without the good doctor and without a very special person. And I want to take the time to thank them. I want to thank the countless hours of work that went into setting this workshop up, that went into setting the guidelines and consensus statements that we're working on. And it wouldn't be possible without the support and without the interest and without the help um, from Dr. Evelyn Boudoir-Roy and from Pascal Lemieux. So if you guys can give a hand, maybe stand up. <laughs> Type 1 diabetes is a devastating disease. Um, it takes 10 years off of life expectancy. Uh, causes uh, increases in morbidity that, that some of us can't even imagine, heart disease end-stage renal disease, nephropathy, uh, and, and uh, retinopathy. That's one of the leading causes of requiring a uh, kidney transplant. There are higher rates uh, of mental health disorders and eating disorders, and there's decreased IQ, the worse glycemia is managed. So there's a big gap and there's a lack of awareness of this very special group. And the hope is that this workshop can help clinicians, health coaches, physicians, PAs, and NPs gain some more understanding. And I'm looking forward to that as well. This is an underserved group. They truly deserve better. The goal of this workshop is you know, to bring awareness and bring uh, knowledge and bring expertise but it's not all doom and gloom. There's some really, really amazing things happening in this space that I think you can all look forward to. Uh, our, the SMHP board has been working over the last six months to publish a consensus statement, uh, which has gone through 15 rounds of revisions and is nearing the end. Uh, Dr. Lenners, you'll be seeing it soon, so hopefully uh, we'll get your input on that as well. And this is a momentous time. This is a really important time. This is a, this is a, uh, this is a very special time. And I'm really honored to be here with all of you with all of these colleagues who work in this space, you know, we have a chance to really affect people's lives. I woke up today and I sent Evelyn a text message and I said, I am so blessed to be here, to be able to help people, to be able to uh, give people quality of life, to work together to improve outcomes. And I just wanna say that uh, it's very meaningful for me to be here today and I hope you guys all share in that meaning. I want to introduce our first speaker. You, I've already mentioned her several times already and I'm probably babbling on. Dr. Evelyn Boudoir-Roy. She's a family physician in Quebec. Uh, she's board certified in obesity medicine um, and addiction medicine. Uh, if you don't know, she is a fierce, fierce person. Um, she's come on, <laughs> you know, we'll talk about that another time. She founded a not-for-profit clinic, Clinica Reversa? Yes. Yeah, the Clinica Reversa, uh, dedicated to reversing chronic disease, a lot of what we do here today. Uh, she has authored and co-authored seven best-selling books in French on therapeutic carbohydrate reduction. We are absolutely happy and privileged to have Dr. Evelyn here, and I am honored and happy to have, to be standing right here next to you. 
And I, I'm not joking about that text message. Uh, without further ado, Dr. Boudoir Roy. Thank you, Terrell. Hello, everyone. Um, thank you, Tro, for this uh, kind introduction. Um, I just want to uh, quick, uh, give a really quick presentation just to set the table, just so that we can, uh, um, I'll be as quick as possible so we can give more time to our speakers so we can learn today um, about uh, how to do type one in a better way for those who are interested in doing it. So. Um, today's workshop day um, was uh, an idea we had following last year's BOCA where we talked about food addiction, which was really great. Tro had the idea of having a one-day workshop or half-a-day workshop before the actual event so that we could actually have a different way of um, doing things. So today is meant to be more... Um, educational, hands-on, practical. Obviously, it's harder to do when there's a lot of people in the room like today, but uh, please feel free to ask your questions, even if you think they're a bit silly or that you should know that by now, especially if you're healthcare professionals. Eh? We're, we, we don't know everything, obviously. So um, it's meant to be interactive as much as possible. So please do it because uh, that's the reason why we're doing this today. It's being recorded as well so that we can uh, make the whole world benefit from this. It's going to be released. Um, Doug and Pamela have agreed, generously agreed to release it for free on YouTube as soon as the um, editing is done so that everybody can benefit from what is going to be discussed today. So um, why is today important? Why is it important to um, um, focus on type 1 diabetes, well, type 1 diabetes is growing fast and it can affect anyone. The um, prevalence is growing. We cannot fully explain why. The genetic alone doesn't explain why this is growing. So um, in the um, 90s, 2.3 million, now 8.8 .8 million, and it's expected that in 2040 will be 17.4 million people affected by this disease. Um, so this actually really matters. But worse, for every two people living with type 1, we're missing a third person who should be here and is not because of the complications of type 1 diabetes. There is a dark side of having uncontrolled type 1 diabetes, um, such as amputation of lower limb, every 30 seconds in the world, there's an amputation due to, due to diabetes. Um, there's more eating disorders with type 1s, um, higher rates of depression and suicide, 11 to 47 years less of life expectancy. The cardiovascular risk is 5 to 11 times higher. And for every year that HbA1c is above 7.5, these people are losing 100 fewer days of their lives. This is highly significant. And, and if we're talking about A1Cs, um, these are studies here. It's just a few amongst a whole bunch of studies that are showing that what type 1 um, people are getting in terms of A1Cs. And as you can see, all these studies, on average, show that type 1s have an around eight of HbA1c, and it's even worse for children and adolescents, as you can imagine. And the problem with that is that the higher your A1c, of course, the more comorbidities you get, retinopathy, diabetic nephropathy, uh, neuropathy, arterial disease, um, uh, uh, myocardial infarction. So you can see, oh, the lines are really small, but you can see the lines going way up and we're at 6.5 here, if you see that. That's way below the average of a type 1, which is around 8 or above. And the main reason that we're here today and that we're discussing this is that it doesn't have to be this way. 
It doesn't have to. There's a better way of doing it. There are better ways, and today we're going to discuss those ways. It's not a one-size-fits-all, and not all the speakers you're going to see today, you're going to hear today, have exactly the same method and same point of view. But that's going to be super enriching for us, so that's great. But um, there are better ways of doing uh, managing type 1 diabetes. So if we combine today's technology with proper knowledge, lifestyle and nutrition, we could save millions of lives. For instance, here are studies that are showing that if you eat less than 50 grams of carbs per day, um, here are the A1Cs that you can get if you're type 1. So it's possible, it's been shown, it's been demonstrated by science over and over that you can, you can use nutrition, lifestyle and technology to reach uh, HbA1c's of non-diabetic people. It can be done, definitely, and we're going to do it. All diabetics are entitled to non-diabetic blood sugars. If that is what you want, you're entitled to it. So, what starts here changes the world, and I believe that. And I would like to Thank the um, SMHP uh, committee for working so hard, Dr. Tro and his group working so hard on getting that consensus, working on the guidelines. This is going to be extremely useful and this is going to be um, a game changer for healthcare professionals. And I'll tell you why, why later. <laughs> but um, yeah, so this is a schedule for today. And we're going to start, as soon as I'm done, <laughs> with Beth McNally, who's going to talk about diet. Um, so the way it's going to work is that there's a, um, a period of time. It depends on each speaker, but they're going to discuss the main points, the main information that they want to um, discuss with you. And then the mics are open, and we're going to um, go with your questions. There are a bit of rules, you know, Doug. <laughs> You've been here before, you know, Doug. There are some rules for today, so please wait until the end of the presentations to ask your questions. Um, you may ask one question at a time at the mic, okay? So we don't want you to monopolize the mic unless there's really no one behind you. Um, and if you have more questions, you're welcome to go back to the end of the line and line up again to ask your other question. Or you may ask your question via the Low Carb USA app, if that's what you want. Uh, Please, no personal stories or big drama, or uh, try not to make it very long. It, um, and it's better for everybody if you just go straight to the point and ask your questions. So we all benefit from the knowledge of the experts that are going to be presenting today. Uh, no medical advice will be offered today. We are not forming a patient-doctor relationship here. <laughs> And don't take photos, please. All slides will be uh, available via Dropbox, okay? So if you need to take a few pictures for social media, please do it quickly, be discreet, and especially what we want to avoid is everybody putting their phones up and blocking the view of the people behind them. So be respectful and discreet. This is really uh, important. We want to keep Doug happy. <laughs> And um, additional documentation will also be uh, available on the drop, the drop box. Uh, the idea is that the available material is uh, helpful, like hands out, re um, reminders, and how to's, and material that will help you in your own life or with your patients. So um, I'm almost done, and I said no personal stories or drama. But I'm going to break that first rule, if you allow me. I'm going to tell you a bit of a personal, professional story with a bit of drama in it. Um, in, uh, so I'm a family doctor in the South Shore of Montreal. And in 2019, 2020, 2021, with Pascal, um, we uh, worked uh, hundreds and hundreds of hours, mainly him, on a program for type 1 uh, diabetes so that we could offer it at my clinic so that people who want to do the low carb, the Bernstein method, or, you know, um, could have a place to go. And uh, so we worked really, really hard and we got a whole multidisciplinary team involved and uh, we got our first cohort ready, our pilot cohort of five patients and we were super excited. We posted all over social media. We were going to change the world. 
And then a, um, a few weeks later, I received a letter from the college, the College of uh, Physicians of Quebec. They know me really well. And uh, it was a, um, an official complaint that a type 1 diabetic lady had filed. She's not a patient. She doesn't know me. She's never been my patient. She doesn't know Pascal. She doesn't know our program. She doesn't know the medicine that we do. She just knew it was wrong. And so she filed an official complaint, and I had to get... Once again, an attorney, a lawyer, and uh, prepare my case and appeared in front of them. I was summoned to explain to them what, what kind of medicine I was doing, because clearly not standard, cl clearly not in the guidelines, right? Um, and the complaint was a six-page document full of accusations on my account of, you know, all kinds of things that I do to my patients or something. And one of those uh, accusations was that I was uh, clearly incompetent to do this kind of medicine with type 1s, you know. And I, one of the things I remember from the committee from the, you know, that I was uh, summoned to appear in front of, one of the things I remember was that they kept on saying, you know, how, like, how did you get your, your knowledge, your competence? How, how do you think you know how to manage type 1? Do you think you're a specialist? Do you think you're an endocrinologist? Should we remind you that you're just a family doctor? What can you possibly know about managing type 1? In the end, I won my case, but we had to shut down the program. And so, so today is important, and tomorrow is important, because it's uh, formal training. It's even CME accredited, and this is important because it's important to get the knowledge out for type 1s, for parents of type 1s, but it's also important that healthcare professionals get proper formal training, that there are guidelines that we can rely on, that we have proper programs to get proper training on, and that is, it is recognized. So today and tomorrow are important events for, for everybody involved and for helping this movement move forward so that we can get better control with type 1 diabetes and we can save million of, millions of lives. And I thank you for being here today because you're part of this. Thank you.